Today I'm at Oakwood Theme Park in Wales for one of their After Dark events which sees the park open until 10pm. I'll be getting some laps on the iconic Megaphobia wooden coaster, experiencing the late night vibes of After Dark and checking out everything else Oakwood has to offer. Is After Dark worth a visit? Let's find out. Well it's all looking a bit different here. That used to be an entrance so we've got some changes. Exciting times. Children probably shouldn't be driving to be fair. Oh hello from Pembrokeshire in Wales where I'm here at Oakwood. It's their after dark event uh, today. They're doing it every Wednesday, every Saturday during the summer holidays and the uh, bank holidays as well. So it means it's open till 9pm. They light the park up when it gets dark, all that kind of stuff. I think they've got entertainment as well on the stages. So looking forward to an interesting day here at Oakwood. So there's a bit of an understated entrance here, but all very smoothly in. So let's go and venture around. Well drenched is still very closed. This has been closed for a very long time. In fact, I've been coming here since 2020, never seen it open, operating or indeed full of water. So not sure what the long-term plans are for this. It's obviously taken up a pretty decent chunk of land and was quite the investment when they first uh, installed it. So yeah, no idea if you know, Drop a comment. Spooky Street down here is their little horror themed sort of child friendly area. Now, I don't know if Spooky 3D actually had its refit. It was going through a lot of work and was closed last year when I was here. Uh, it used to be quite a fun little dark ride, but we'll go and see if it's opened. If not, maybe we'll go and ride this not particularly great roller coaster. But don't worry, there are some better things to come. Well, I think that answers the spooky 3D question. That looks, yeah, that ain't open, is it? <laughs> so I'm gonna start the day with Creepy Crawler, a family coaster with over the shoulder restraints. My favorite. Quite a funky little queue line though. Uh, some plug socket theming there. All right, mate, you sort of look how I feel after riding Creepy Crawler. That was not good. Yeah, so really, really rough, sort of rusty track, horrible, horrible restraints, which are completely unnecessary. Uh, that's definitely a one and done if you come here. Now, one thing that really has to be said about Oakwood is that the surroundings it's in are really, really nice. It's proper lush greenery in, down in the hills. It's, uh, it's a really lovely location for a theme park. It is, of course, a little out of the way too, which I do think affects attendance. And, you know, here we are in the middle of the summer holidays on one of their event days, and it's, uh, it's not that busy around. So it should be good for ride count, but yeah, obviously you want to see parks kind of thriving in the summer holidays. Now, of course, one of the main draws here at Oakwood is Megaphobia. This huge wooden coast that got retracked last season. I did come around, I only got one ride in it last year and I've got to say, I wasn't blown away, but it was early in the day and it wasn't a great operating day. So hopefully it's warm today, it's afternoon. Hopefully it's had a good few laps around, it's warmed up. It's also not much of a queue, so fingers crossed and get a few rides in and really establish a firm opinion on what is rated as one of the best wooden coasters in the country. And there it goes. Yeah, piss off queue jumpers. Well, it took a couple of rides, but Megaphobia did finally sort of deliver there. So I had two rides, uh, second row, I thought was a bit meh, to be honest. Um, not a lot of airtime. You're sort of shuffling into things. So as, as you go to get airtime or go to pick up pace, it just gets killed again. But then I went more for the middle of the train. Um, I know it's a controversial opinion, but I do often find the middle of the trains give you the most sort of consistent airtime. Um, and I found that a much more enjoyable experience because I actually got some force on the drop, some air over some of the hills. I do think it, it, it loses its pace a bit towards the end quite dramatically. But on the whole, it's a really good roller coaster. Is it the best in the UK, wooden-wise? I don't think so. I still think I prefer Wicker Man purely for how it's paced and themed. Um, just don't vape on it, yeah? But otherwise, it's just a perfectly good coaster. It's good to see that they put the effort and the money into doing the retrack work last year. 
Um, there's a lot of parks in Oakwood's kind of position that maybe wouldn't do that, so I do commend them for doing that. But I look forward to getting some more rides on it later. It's not I've got a massive queue, like I said earlier, not as busy here today as I perhaps thought it would be in the summer holidays. But I'm looking forward to riding it as the kind of the evening kicks in, and uh, hopefully it uh, picks up a bit more pace. Quite like these little lights up here. It's quite funky. They'll look good later on. So I'm just going to head to the pirate ship because they're always fun, aren't they? <laughs> Well, pirate ships do pirate ship things, don't they? And I think it's one of the rides that every theme park should have, or at least have a variation of. That was pretty good fun. It didn't hit the super heights that you get on some, but there was certainly some airtime there. Uh, and I wasn't even in the back, so yeah, perfectly decent. You can see it there behind me. It sort of looks like he's about to smash me in the back of the head. Well, Bounce appears to be out of commission again as well. This is uh, another ride that's had a bit of a troubled history. It doesn't seem to spend a lot of time open. We're well, just heading in to Speed No Limits, which sounds like a straight to DVD sequel to a Keanu Reeves film. Let's hope Dennis Hopper hasn't wired this with explosives or it might be uncomfortable. So let's talk speed, a Gertzlau Eurofighter, and one of the better ones, I think. Um, I'm not a fan of the vertical lift at all, and I will say, as a ride experience, it has got a bit rougher with age, but that airtime hill behind me is incredible, the loop is really good, and it's just a really fun, solid little coaster. And up at the top of the hill here, you really start to appreciate the sort of natural beauty of Oakwood. It really is set in a fantastic location. But with that location, they could do more. And this completely unthemed disco is an example of that. <laughs> so while Oakwood isn't necessarily a heavily themed park, here in the Neverland section, they have put quite a little bit of effort in. So, so it's quite nice to wander around here. Although I'm not sure what the TARDIS has to do with Neverland. Maybe some sort of IP crossover there where Peter Pan goes to space. And of course, Wendy from the Peter Pan films, uh, after she grew up, she went on to start a henna tattoo business. It's not the best first impression when you walk into a park, just loads of plyboard. Well, Skull Rock was pretty good fun. There was a little indoor section there with some theming, and it was just one drop, but it did get me quite wet, especially in the nether regions, which is never ideal. Anyway, just heading into Hook's House of Havoc now. Got no idea what this is, and it might just be a random play thing. It is. Yeah, maybe uh, not too age appropriate for me to go on there. <laughs> Well, Tink's flight score was pretty good fun and it did air me out a bit and dry me off slightly, so that was all good. It's quite fun that you can move the paddle around to sort of decide which way you face, whether you go inwards or outwards. Yeah, it's an entertaining little ride. So just sat chilling here on the grass for a little while. Just there contemplating my day here so far at Oakwood. It's, it's been pretty good. I mean, the weather really helps. It's a gorgeous day. Um, opens up things like log flumes, which are less fun when it's miserable and wet. But it's a park that's got a lot going for it, but yet it's really not busy here today. And that's got to be a concern in the height of summer. I feel as though they maybe need a couple more rides to really draw people in. Once you've done the heavy hitters, the megaphobia, speed, couple of the others there isn't really a great deal left to do other than kind of walk around and get re-rides it's a lovely place to kind of hang out but i do feel maybe they need a bit more to just uh, to just lure the people in here but also not every ride is in the best condition when you look at the disco even the log flume um you know could do with some paint and work and touching up and things so there are, there are definitely opportunities to improve here but i mean the location's lovely the vibe here is all right, it's very chilled. There's bits and pieces of music around that you pick up on. It's not a 
heavily atmospheric part, I would say, but certainly nice and pleasant to be here. So certainly a park I recommend, but as the evening goes on, we'll kind of see if things pick up a little bit. Oh, treetops. This is a fairly standard family coaster that weaves around the trees. It's quite fun. Yeah, then brakes are sharp, but overall it's a pretty fun little coaster there. Weaving through the trees, only a one lap though. I seem to remember that being a two lap special at some point, but yeah, just the one there. And like I say, then brakes slam hard at the end. But you know what? It's a fun little coaster to get on. I'm gonna head down to Megaphobia now and see if we can get another couple of rides on there and then chill for a bit before the evening entertainment. Well, two more rides on Megaphobia there. Towards the front, it's definitely Megaphobia. You really don't get a lot of force and it felt quite rough on the front uh, that time around. Once you get towards the middle, towards the back of the train though, it's a whole different ride experience. It's so much more fun, so much more speed and airtime and drag over the hills. But yeah, it's, it's a really decent wooden coaster, but I'm not sure it's quite as good as some people think it is, but everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And that's half the fun of riding roller coasters. We all love different things. So let me know down below whether you think Megaphobia is the best wooden coaster in the UK, or whether you think it's Wicker Man or Grand National or that little kid's one at Gulliver's. Bob Slay reckons you should like the video. So do what Bob says, yeah? Well, I've just had a quick bite to eat in the Oak restaurant back there. Had uh, chicken tenders, chips and Coke with a lovely sriracha dip, actually. Uh, it came to about 14 quid, which depressingly is actually pretty reasonable value for theme park food in 2024. Uh, it was actually really nice, though. Not overly salty or anything, so pretty happy with that. Now I've got some lovely early evening sun, so going to go back on some rides. So you're going to start the evening session with a ride on Bob Slay. <laughs> It's like quite a fun ride on Bob Slay there. Um, that's good fun. If you go down without a brake on, pick up some decent speed. It's not the longest course, but it's still pretty entertaining. I really like how they've got the uh, lights along the side of the track as well. So it's, uh, it's quite uh, picturesque in this kind of early evening sun. So yeah, enjoyed that. Always good fun, but it'd be nice if it was a little bit longer. And as you may hear in the background, we have some evening entertainment kicking off on the main stage now. So let's go and investigate, shall we? So I found myself back up by speed again. So I'm going to check out the queue. Um, obviously they're only running one train, so hopefully it's not too chaotic and I'll get another ride. <laughs> So front row on speed that time, still I think the better of the Gertzlau Eurofighters we have in the country, but it definitely, definitely picked up a rattle, a real side to side shuffle coming into and through the loop, but otherwise decent fun Gertzlau Eurofighter, but I couldn't ride it multiple times because that Gert stake will kick in eventually. <laughs> Oh, go on then, let's do a disco. Arps, this one's for you. Well, despite how basic and poorly themed that disco is, that was one of the best rides on a disco I've ever had, and almost entirely because of the ride operator who was high-fiving everyone <laughs> all the way around. Everyone on the vehicle was properly into it, enjoying themselves. I mean, his hands must be raw if he's been doing that all day, but honestly, massive props, top guy and uh, made the ride so much more enjoyable. So massive shout out to the guy on Dizzy Disc. Oakwood, give him a pay rise, yeah? Well, I don't really know where the evening went, but uh, it's two minutes to nine, so I'm rushing into the Megaphobia queue to hopefully get one last ride. It's all lovely lit up here. Well, Megaphobia at night is a bit of a vibe. It looks amazing lit up. 
and the ride experience. I was on row seven there, by far the best ride of the day. Almost completely dark. Um, well, obviously with the up lighting, flicking between purple and orange and blue. Really, really, really good ride. And I would highly recommend coming down to the Oakwood after dark just to go and do that night ride on Megaphobia, as well as the whole general vibe in the park. It's really nice. We're gonna head through now, and take a look at some of the UV paint madness that's going on towards the main stage. It looks like it's all kicking off. So let's go have a look, shall we? So that's all from a really fun evening here at Oakwood. Megaphobia in the Dark was awesome. The UV party was great. The dude on the dizzy disc really made that fantastic ride. So the evening session here, can't complain at all. And if you're gonna to come to Oakwood this summer, I would highly recommend coming to one of these after dark events. It's no additional cost. It's the same as your single day ticket and you just get a much better experience thrown in. In terms of the park as a whole, I was reading an article on Wales Online during my dinner and uh, a lot of people are really down on this place. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of opportunities here to improve. There are some aspects that are a bit run down, some rides that aren't open, but there's also an awful lot of positives. And booked in advance, it was 41 pounds here for a, a day that ran from 10 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. I think that's pretty good value. and. This is a park that could probably benefit from the support. It doesn't get the numbers that the Merlin parks get or even like the likes of Portons and that sort of thing. So overall, I've had a fun day here. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I'd recommend coming down here for an Oakwood After Dark event. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more. I am heading off to the completely opposite side of the UK next week. I'm going to be visiting uh, Pleasured Hills, Yarmouth, that kind of stuff. So yeah, subscribe if you'd like to see some of that stuff and watch the video up on the screen now from Emerald Park, which I visited a couple of months ago. They've got a brand new area and a couple of awesome new roller coasters. So as I descend into the darkness here, I shall bid you adieu. See you later.